This is Mark Schofield from Inside the Pylon and the Bleacher Report NFL 1000 project taking a look at some week three action for the Bleacher Report scouting notebook. Today I'm going to look at a couple of plays from Detroit Lions wide receiver Marvin Jones. Jones had a massive game against Green Bay in Detroit's loss at Lambeau Field. He was targeted eight times, caught six passes for 205 yards and two touchdowns, including a 73-yarder to help close out the first half and cut into Green Bay's 31-3 lead. Now, with numbers like that, you might expect that Jones was far and away the best wide receiver in the NFL 1000 this week, but the numbers didn't quite match up with this kind of production. And I'm about to show you what I saw on two plays in particular that couldn't quite bring me to give him massive grades, particularly with respect to route running which is one of the traits that were graded in this project. Now, what we're trying to do, again, with this project is show you how guys are doing each week, and we're trying to take into consideration everything that happens on a given play, whether the, what the defense shows them, who the player is matched up against, and everything that goes into making a play happen from snap to finish. And on these two plays, Jones got a little bit of a hand from the defense, which didn't really want me to bring me to give him a massive number when it comes to the route running score. This is the 73-yard touchdown reception, and again, it comes near the end of the first half. Here's the play art that you can see. Jones is split wide to the right. He has a pretty normal alignment. He's just outside the bottom of the numbers here. And he's going to be matched up against Josh Hawkins, who's right here coming over to cover him in sort of what looks to be um, cover two man underneath. Now... Jones is going to run, as you can see, a straight vertical route right here. Now, in this coverage scheme, what you're typically expecting the cornerback to do, whether it's straight cover two or cover two man underneath, if he gets a vertical route, he's going to try to carry that and sink underneath it. Because in that cover two scheme now, you've got that safety on the side over here, and you've got this guy here. You're trying to constrict this throw-in window as much as you can. That's This area right here is that soft spot of cover two. So if the offense is going to challenge that, you want both the cornerback here and the safety here to constrict that throwing lane as best as they can, which is why that cornerback here, Hawkins, is going to try to sink under that vertical route and stay with it as best as he can. But that's not exactly what happens. You'd expect them to get a good jam with the line of scrimmage and then stay with them or at least try to reroute him a little bit at the line of scrimmage. But watch Hawkins even before the play. You'll see he's distracted. He's watching inside. He's trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page with respect to the coverage, but the ball's about to be snapped. And when it is, he's still turning back to see Jones. And that gives Jones that free release. He gets separation. He makes a great adjustment to the ball and a great move after the catch. But it's everything that leads up to that that gives him that free release off the line of scrimmage. Hawkins doesn't get the jam him. He doesn't even get a single hand on him. It just gives Jones that free release to the outside. You'll see it again here. This is the broadcast angle, which gives us a little bit of a closer view of it. There's Hawkins. Again, look into the inside. Look into the rest of the defense. He doesn't have his eyes on the defender. I mean, just by comparison, look at the bottom of the screen. There you've got somebody in press coverage, ready to go, ready for the snap. So Hawkins is looking to the inside. When the ball is snapped, he's in the process of turning back to Jones. It allows Jones that free release. And he's got the separation. He's made, again, great adjustment, great move after the catch. But it's that ability to get that free release that is given to him by the defense that kind of makes me hesitant to give that a great route running score. Here's Jones's first reception of the second half. You'll see he's now split here to the right. And he's going to be running another vertical route again. We've got an inside receiver here who's going to be running, as you can see, that out route, that quick out. Green Bay is in a straight sort of cover two zone here. They show a single high safety at the top. They're showing cover one, but they're going to roll it at the snap to this cover two look, as you can see. Now here, Jones is matched up with Randall. And as we just talked about, especially in a straight cover two scheme like this, cover two zone underneath. You expect this cornerback, Randall in this case, to at least get a jam and then sink under that vertical route just a bit. Try to stay with that vertical route and again, close that throwing window. Because as you can see from the play art drawn up, this area here is pretty open. That's the soft spot of this coverage. So teams have taught those 
taught cornerbacks to sink under that route, to try to constrict that throwing lane as much as possible. Now, Randall, for whatever reason, doesn't even really pay attention to Jones at the snap. He starts quickly to focus on the inside slot receiver in that out route. There was actually a debate that we had at Inside the Pond on what coverage this really was because it almost looks like Randall in the outside position here is playing sort of a cover two trap, which is a way teams have tried to take away that little flat route by having the cornerback rather than gain depth, he'll stay and kind of squat on that little flat route from the number two receiver. But given everything we see from the rest of the defense, particularly this safety, this looks to be just straight cover two zone underneath, which is why it's very strange to watch what happens because Randall gives another free release to the wide receiver. The ball is snapped. He just gives him a pass and whiff, lets him go. That gives Jones another free release. Again, he makes a great catch. Don't get me wrong, but it's that free release that he gets right after the snap that makes it basically a situation where he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to win at the line of scrimmage. But we evaluate the wide receiver position and how guys can get open. Many routes are won at the line of scrimmage against the press, beating that press coverage, getting that defensive back on his heels. Jones doesn't have to do anything here. Randall just lets him go. Jones is given that free release to the outside, and he's open right away. Stafford makes a good read, good ball, great catch, holds on, first down. So again, what we're trying to do here is try to separate, you know, elite players, elite plays each week from good to great. Jones was great this week, but in trying to determine whether he was really elite on these two plays at least, the fact that the defense just gives him a free release at the line of scrimmage made it tough for me to really give him a high mark when it comes to his route running ability.